Dear friends, welcome back! The summer is over here in Greece and I am thrilled to be back with a new video. In this Arduino tutorial, we are going to build a simple FM radio with a Nokia LCD display. Let's get started! Hello guys, I am Nick and welcome to Educates TV, a channel that is all about do-it-yourself electronics projects. In this channel, I share everything about the projects I built to help you build similar projects or inspire you to start building things because it is easy, fun and creative. Subscribe to the channel now if you don't want to miss any future video. In this video, we are going to build this, a simple FM radio receiver on a breadboard. Let's listen to it for a few seconds. As you can see, the radio is working fine and we can hear some music coming out of it. I am transmitting some YouTube safe tracks using this inexpensive FM transmitter at this frequency. I am using the Nokia 5110 LCD display to display the selected frequency, the signal strength and a stereo icon if we are receiving stereo sound. The brains of the projects are the small and inexpensive Arduino Nano. We can control the volume of the speaker using this potentiometer and we can change the radio frequency using this potentiometer. It is a fascinating project and relatively easy to build. Let's see how to build it. The parts needed to build this project are the following, an Arduino Nano, a TEA5767 FM radio module, a Nokia 5110 LCD display, two 10K potentiometers, an LM386 amplifier module, a small speaker, a breadboard and some wires. The total cost of the project is around $15. You can find links to all the parts I use in the description of the video below. Before attempting to build this project, please be sure to watch some of my previous videos that will help you gain some experience with the Nokia 5110 display. You can watch them by clicking on the card here. The project is built around this FM radio module. The module uses the TA5767 radio chip, this one here. The chip uses the I2C interface, so it is straightforward to use it with Arduino. On the module we can also find an audio amplifier, this little chip here. Unfortunately, this is a headphone amplifier, so we cannot connect a speaker to the output of the module directly since the audio signal is very weak. We need to amplify it first. Also, there is no way to control the volume that comes out of the module with software, so we are going to use a potentiometer later on. On the module, there are two headphone jacks, one for the antenna and the other one is the standard headphone output. The module comes with this antenna, but you can easily build your own if you wish. Let's now build the circuit according to this schematic diagram. First of all, let's place all the parts on the breadboard. We connect the ground pin of every part to the breadboard's ground rail and the VCC pin of every part to the breadboard's positive rail except from the potentiometer which will control the volume. Now, let's connect the radio module. The LSE pin goes to analog pin 5 of the Arduino Nano and the SDA pin goes to analog pin 4. Now we connect the middle pin of the potentiometer to analog pin 0. With this potentiometer we are going to select the frequency. Now we need to connect the volume potentiometer to be able to control the volume. I used an audio cable. I plugged in one end of the cable to the audio output of the module. Next I cut the other end to find four wires inside the cable. The module outputs stereo sound but we are going to use only one audio channel this time. So I connect only two of the wires. One of them is ground and the other one is the audio signal which needs to be amplified. The audio signal wire goes to the input pin of the volume potentiometer. The middle pin of the potentiometer is the audio signal that comes out. To amplify the audio signal, I use this module which uses the LM386 amplifier chip. The audio signal goes to this pin, the ground pin from the audio cable goes to this pin. Now, all we have to do is to provide power to the module. So, we connect this pin to the positive rail of the breadboard and this pin to the negative rail of the breadboard. The only thing that we have to do now is to connect a small speaker to the output of the module like this. With this small potentiometer, we can control the amplification of the signal. Now, all we have to do is to connect the Nokia 5110 LCD display. 
Please watch my detailed video on how to use the Nokia 51 display to see how to connect it or follow this schematic. The last step, which is optional, is to connect a 330 microfarad capacitor to the breadboard like this to reduce the noise of the audio signal. If we now power up the project, we can see that a splash screen is displayed for 3 seconds and after that we can hear sound from the speaker. The sound quality is not the best with this speaker and this audio amplifier. If I use another commercial speaker with an embedded amplifier, the sound quality is perfect. Check it out! So, the output signal from the module is perfect, but the amplifier and the speaker I used reduce the sound quality, so I need to search for better quality ones. Now that we have built the hardware, let's take a look at the software side of the project. In this project we use two libraries, I am using the Nokia 5110 graph library and a library for the TA5767 FM chip, you can find links to both libraries in the description of the video below. The code works like this. At first we initialize the radio module and the display and we display a splash screen for 3 seconds. I designed this splash screen in Photoshop. Watch this tutorial if you want to know how to upload your graphics to a Nokia 51 display. Next in the loop function we read the value from the potentiometer that controls the frequency every few milliseconds. We get the analog value from the potentiometer and we map it to a frequency value. Since we read an analog value, this value is not constant, it goes up or down slightly even if we do not turn the potentiometer. So to achieve a stable frequency we only tune the radio to a different frequency if the frequency has changed considerably. So if there is a significant shift in the frequency, we tune the radio module to that frequency, we get the signal strength and we print it on the screen, we print the stereo icon if needed and lastly we print the selected frequency. That is how the code works, it is simple but works ok. As always you can find the code of the project in a link in the description below. As you can see, in about half an hour we can build an FM radio on a breadboard. How cool is that? The sound quality that we get out of this project is not great, yet I am going to work more on this project to improve it in every field. I want to turn this project into a complete radio with a retro 3D printed enclosure. First of all, I am going to try different audio amplifiers and speakers to get good audio quality out of this project. I will also move it away from the breadboard and make a permanent version of it on a prototyping port. I will also design an enclosure for this project to make it look like a radio. Of course, the code of the project needs a lot of improvements and tweaks as well. One feature I would like to add is a fine-tuned functionality which will improve the sound quality even more. The project requires around 50 mA of current when the backlight of the display is disabled. We can further reduce the current with some software and hardware tricks, so this project can be battery powered. I think the result will be impressive, I cannot wait to see this project completed on my desk. This video was just the beginning. I would love to hear your opinion about this project. Do you find this project interesting? Also, what kind of improvements do you suggest? Do you have any tricks from your experience that can improve this project? Please post your comments in the comment section below and don't forget to like the video and share it with your friends if you find it interesting. Also, consider subscribing to the channel and do click that bell or YouTube might not show you updates as new videos come out. If you are going to be shopping for parts, check out the affiliate links from the video description. That's it for today guys, thank you very much for watching, I'll see you in the next video.